All right, so in this video, we're going to introduce the notion of sequences. In some sense, sequences are nothing super fancy. Uh, they're merely an ordered collection of numbers. Uh, in fact, you've been familiar with sequences for quite some time. Uh, you probably dating back to hell, grade school. Uh, here is an example of a sequence, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Why is this a sequence? Well, it's an ordered collection of numbers. There's a first one, uh, 2, there's a second one, 4, a third one, 6, and a fourth one, and a fifth one, and so on. Uh, here's another sequence, uh, a half, a third, a fourth, and a fifth. There's a first number, a second number, a third number, a fourth number, and so on. Uh, you could even, looking at the pattern, speculate uh, what, say, the tenth number in this sequence would be. Uh, well, if the first number was a half and the second a third, uh, the tenth number would be one eleventh. Uh, so this collection, when we say put this dot, dot, dot here, we're meaning that the collection goes on forever. Uh, but ultimately, if there's a pattern, the pattern is going to continue forever. Uh, here's another sequence. Uh, four fifths, five sixths, six sevenths, seven eighths. Ultimately, there's a first number, a second number, a third number, and so on. So in general, whenever we phrase a sequence, we can use this notation, uh, a1, comma, a2, comma, a3, and so on, where a1 is referring to the first number in the sequence, a2, the second number in the sequence. Uh, in general, like, you know, an would be the nth number in the sequence. So like a100 would be the hundredth number in the sequence, uh, and so on. Now, uh, when we have sequences, there's frequently two ways to present them concisely. Uh, one way is called a recursive presentation and the other an explicit or general form. So when it comes to a recursive uh, presentation, we are first going to be given what A1 is. So we will be given the first number in our sequence. And what will also be given, for every n greater than or equal to 2, we're going to be given a way to form a n in terms of a n minus 1. So what this allows us to do is, for example, to form a 2 in terms of a 1, uh, to form a 3 then in terms of a 2, to, in general, form each next number in terms of the previous. So once you have a 1 and you know how to form the next number, then, well, you can do just that. And once you have the next number, a2, you can use the recursive uh, definition to get yourself the subsequent number. So you can always get the subsequent number from the previous. Uh, another way that sequences can be presented is an explicit form. And in an explicit form, you're simply going to be given a direct expression for your an. So this is going to be a, sort of a simple plug and chug presentation. Uh, OK, so now having said that, uh, can we get some experience with these things? I think that's probably a good idea at this point. So here, uh, let's begin by looking at the recursive presentation, because this one is maybe a little bit less familiar to us and uh, something that's probably worth getting some familiarity with. So here, uh, as we mentioned in the recursive definition, you're going to be given the first number and you're going to be given a way to form each next number in terms of the previous. What we're asked to do here is to find not just a1, because, well, hell, we know that a1 is 2, but also then a2, the next number, a3, all the way out to a5. And uh, we can do this uh, because if we use our recursive uh, definition, for example, this uh, recursive definition works for any n greater than or equal to 2. So, well, in particular, it would work for 2. So if we let n be 2, our equation here would read a2 equals a1 plus 2. Uh, similarly, we, because, well, hell, we got to find a3, a4, and a5, we could do a3 by letting uh, n equal 3, and we would get a3 equals a2 plus 2. We also need to find a4, so let's plug in a, a4, or excuse me, let's plug in n equals 4. We'll get a4 equals a, n minus 1 here would be 3, plus 2. a5, a4 plus 2. Okay, and now, uh, what, what, these, what these equations allow us to do is to find each next number in terms of the previous. So if we scroll this all the way back to where we were looking for a2, by inserting what we know a1 to be, namely 2, we can compute what a2 must be. Because now we see that a2 is just 2 plus 2, so a2 is 4. And well, now that we have a2, we can find ourselves a3 using our next equation. So since a2 is 4, well, a3 has to be 6. And uh, continuing onward now, a3 is 6, so we see a4 has to be 8. And since a4 is 8, we can subsequently get that a5 equals 10. 
And you can see how this recursive formula uh, sort of powers up here in a sense, because once you have the first number, you can find the next and the next and the next and the next. Uh, so to address the uh, uh, answer for what we were asked to find, A1 is 2, A2 is 4, then 6, then 8, then 10, and that gets us to A5. So here is the list of terms which was requested of us, namely the terms from A1 through A5. Okay, uh, so to extend this to maybe a slightly more complicated example, but uh, really it's the same idea, uh, let's look at this one here, where A1 is 2, and the next number is minus 3 times the previous, plus 1. Uh, so, well, this formula works for n greater than or equal to 2. Let's use this formula when n is 2. So that'll tell us that A2 is equal to minus 3 times A1 plus 1. Uh, and we can run this all the way down to A5, which we will need to, because here we are also trying to find A1 through A5. So A3 is going to be minus 3 A2 plus 1. A4 minus 3 times the previous plus 1. And A5 is minus 3 times the previous plus 1. In fact, every next number in the sequence is just minus 3 times the previous plus 1. Well, since the first number in the sequence is 2, we can use our recursive relation in order to determine what the next number is, namely a2. Substituting in 2 for a1, we now have 3 times 2 plus 1, or excuse me, negative 3 times 2 plus 1, so this will give us a2 equal to minus 5. Uh, what about a3? Well, we can find a3 since we now know a2. a2 is minus 5. Run the numbers here, 15 plus 1, 16. A3 now being known and being 16, we can compute negative 3 times 16, add 1 to it. That's going to give us minus 47, which will now be A4. Moving our way on to the next recursive relation, A5 is going to be minus 3 times minus 47 plus 1. So uh, putting that one together, uh, let's see, I get uh, 142. I used a calculator for that, but hey, so be it. Okay, so now putting everything uh, into a direct explanation of our answer, uh, what do we get? Uh, A1 is 2, that was what was first given to us. A2 minus 5, then 16, then minus 47, then 142. So, as we can see from these examples, and you could imagine for any example, uh, a recursive definition of a sequence works really nicely. Uh, you know what the first number is and in, in your sequence, and then you can subsequently form the next number from the previous. And this allows you to see the terms that are within your sequence going from first through however many you are interested in seeking. Okay, so we've seen the recursive formula. Let's uh, shift gears here a little bit, and let's look at the general form. So the general form, as we will see, is going to be a little bit simpler to work with, and it's actually going to be fairly familiar, because the explicit or general form is where you are told directly what a n is, and this is going to be a whole hell of a lot like things that we've seen before, because this is essentially a functional expression here. Because if we're asked to find a1, and we know that a n is equal to n over n plus 1, then that means that a1 is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1. That means that a2 is equal to, let's use the formula for plugging in n equals 2, that's going to be 2 over 2 plus 1. Uh, we can see that a3 is going to be 3 over 3 plus 1. Hell, we can see that a5 is going to be 5 over 5 plus 1. Because, in fact, a n is always equal to n over n plus 1. Well, uh, running the numbers here, we can see exactly what a1 through a5 have to be when we uh, simply run the numbers. So uh, what? Uh, let's see here. a1 is a half. a2 is two-thirds. a3 is three-fourths. Following the trend, the one that we didn't compute, but you can see how this pattern naturally follows. Four-fifths, five-sixths. There we are. Here's the terms a1 through a5 provided this relation. Now, one thing that's really nice with the explicit or general form is you can very quickly find terms that are deep into your sequence. Whereas with the recursive definition, if you needed to find A100, you would have to do a lot of computations to get out that far. Whereas here, you can find A100 simply by plugging in. So if we need to find A100, we plug in 100 over 101. We were also asked to find A10. Why not 10 over 11? No sweat. Uh, okay, so here's a, we're, so we're getting a feel for the explicit general form, and here's uh, one additional example here to uh, sort of familiarize ourselves with that. Uh, An is equal to cosine n times pi. 
uh, we want to find a1, a2 out to a5. Well, how do we find a1? We just simply plug in uh, n equals 1 because we were given the general form. So this is going to give us cosine pi. a2 is just cosine 2 pi. And this is going to go all the way out to a5, which is cosine 5 pi. Now, to compute these cosine values, it might help to have a unit circle. So let me just draw one in here real quick. Over here, we're at 1, 0. Over here, we're at minus 1, 0. Why are we looking at these points? Well, because you can see the angles here uh, go from pi to 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. And uh, angle of 0 is here, angle of pi on the other side of the unit circle, 2 pi, back to the right side, 3 pi off to the left, 4 pi, and so on. And we know uh, that on the unit circle, the x-coordinate of any point on the unit circle corresponds to the cosine value associated with that particular angle. So, namely, cosine pi is going to be the cosine value associated with uh, angle of pi, which is minus 1. So we know that a1 is just minus 1. And a2 is going to be the cosine or the x-coordinate from the unit circle associated with an angle of 2 pi. Well, that's going to be over here at 1. And if you see this pattern continuing now, when we get cosine of 3 pi, we're going to be back at minus 1. Cosine of 4 pi, which is going to be the value of a4, is going to be 1. And, uh, well, a5, which is cosine of 5 pi, is going to be minus 1. Okay, so at this point, uh, we know what a sequence is. It's just an ordered collection of numbers. And we know two ways to present a sequence, which are the two common ways that they're seen. These sequences can be presented recursively, where you're given the first number and a way to find each subsequent term. And then you also can be given the explicit or general form where you can simply plug and chug.